Hi, this is Clark from V12ICPAC.com, and I want to take some time on this video to go into some explanation of actually how the coil packs work, problems that we see with the coils, and the ultimate solution that we have come up with uh, to provide a much better quality product than what you're getting from Mercedes dealership if you're buying a brand new pack. So just a little quick review. Uh, I started this business about three and a half years ago. I ponied up and I bought 100 coils, and they lasted almost six months before I had to go back and order uh, another hundred. So I uh, figure 12 coils per pack and so 96 coils would have gotten me eight packs. So a little better than, than one a month when I first started out. This is now uh, July of 2019. So uh, three and a half years later from about my very first video. And uh, I was on vacation um, last month and got back two weeks ago. And uh, Father's Day, day after I got back to work, I had 500 coils that had just come in. And here we are about two weeks later, and those 500 coils are gone, and I'm waiting for my next shipment. I think in the last two weeks, I've made multiple shipments to Australia, uh, East Africa, Uganda, um, boy, Finland, Denmark, Iceland of all places, uh, Germany, Canada, United States, um, and Malaysia. So. Uh, worldwide response to uh, this market that exists out here for these rebuild uh, coil packs and about six or seven months ago now late last fall early last winter uh, I had ponied up with my supplier and my supplier is the same guy that you see on eBay he came out with these coils three and a half years ago um, and so my service was basically buying somebody else's ignition coil and then doing the value add doing the test troubleshooting and then rebuilding the coil packs. And um, really no issues beyond the nonsense that I had to deal with. It never it never came through to the user, you guys the customers of the rebuilt coil packs. Uh, I probably ran about a 6% reject rate uh, from the factory. And that went from probably a third of those being mechanical where the ground straps, the weld didn't, the spot weld didn't hold, ground strap broke, uh, ring terminal came off. There's an alignment with the top of the cap, and if they got that wrong, uh, the pins, when you go to solder them up, were at 90 degrees, basically 90 degrees off, and you couldn't use them. And then the other two-thirds were uh, electrical deficiencies in the actual coil production. So for me, if I got six test drives, six coil packs in a row with 100% yield, that was, a, that was a good stretch of time. Um, I think six was the record. Uh, and then there was usually a failed uh, coil and you, th you think from my standpoint you're dealing with new product it's going to work and so I'm spending more time troubleshooting looking for something else on the printed circuit boards that might have been blown that I missed something out of spec that I missed whatever so uh, a near death experience to the business last uh, winter when I got 500 coils in from the factory and they were all bad um, and I went through hell trying to figure out if it was me, if it was <laughs> what it was. And no matter how many coils, different coils, different configurations of coils, they were bad. They sent me uh, 100 direct from the factory. Those were all bad. I went to an outside service, and I had the OEM coils x-rayed, and I had their coils x-rayed. And I'll show you those x-ray pictures, but a four-year-old could figure out why they didn't work. And these guys insisted that their engineers said they were good. So... Over the next month or two, they proceeded to send me more samples, and of course, none of them were any good. And the way the world works sometimes, uh, when you're lucky, I had a group of engineers reach out to me last winter, the same time this failure was going on, and they said that they could produce the coil, and would I be interested? So we had some conversations about specifications, my needs, so on and so forth. Uh, they needed some additional funding, tooling and stuff to pull it off. So I provided that. We created a joint venture, and um, throughout early winter through Chinese New Year, I had to wait that one out. It seemed like it was forever. But we went through a series of uh, samples, um, kind of doing a hybrid. We were taking just the shells off the old coils, polishing those with the internals from their coils uh, until we were sure everything was working right, and then we shifted to making our own tooling uh, to complete the, the actual coil which is what we're selling now. Took advantage of some advanced technologies, so we're actually building the coils differently than Mercedes did. I believe we've got a much better product. Uh, it's not going to be suffering uh, from a shorter term use. 
uh, a lot of these, I mean, Mercedes had suggested to change these coil packs, the voltage transformer, the spark plugs, all around 60 to 70,000 miles, um, just because they were wearing out. I know on one video I had mentioned that uh, the guys at Eurocharged had put their car on their dyno, tested it, sent me the coil packs, and I rebuilt them, they put it back on the dyno, and they picked up 30 horsepower, just as a result of having fresh packs uh, with, with electronics, the windings in the coils working better and such. So, um, but I have a lot, I got two calls this week, both customers, one guy in 04, another guy in 05, both SL600s, one car had 19,000 miles on it, the other car had 30,000 miles, and they both have bad packs, and they died off just from time, and I'm going to go into and explain how that happens, why that happens, uh, I'm going to change cameras, and we'll, we'll kind of do a, uh, an in-depth right on top of the print circuit board of these coil packs, and I'll show you how they work. But uh, for right now, I just wanted to make sure I get the word out that we are, in fact, making our own coils. It's still mosquito season around here. Uh, we have enhanced technologies uh, to make a better coil, and I'll go into that in a minute, and I'll show you our coils when I'm all done with this. So in the meantime, I appreciate uh, you watching this, and uh, let's move on, change the camera angle, and uh, go through these coil packs, show you how they work. Okay, so let's quickly walk through this thing, and I've got all my props here, and we'll go through a bunch of stuff. So, this is the inside of the coil pack. This particular one has got bad fets on, on four of these, so I've already taken them off. Um, however, when the coil is in the pack, you've got these three leads that are basically, actually not basically, they are, um, they're wrapped, they're pinched, and then they're spot welded around each of these three pins on here for each one of these. And they're all, all the same, basically. So <clears throat> when we look at what's going on here, you've got a FET. These are, these are um, switching FETs. Think of them as a light switch in a room in a house. So you throw the switch on, the light comes on. In this case, the spark plug fires. You turn it off, and it's just the opposite. So these are switches going on and off. And the other FETs, the ones that I'm going to replace, they're more like a circuit breaker outside on the, on the panel of the house. So if this guy is gone, it's basically like turning the circuit breaker off in the house. So no matter how many times you turn the light switch on in the bedroom, it's never going to come on because the circuit breaker is off. So if this thing's bad, nothing works. If one of these goes bad, it's controlling the individual coil. But typically these don't go bad unless they've had some incentive and that incentive is a shorting coil uh, if it's if it's shorted out these can only handle so much power and they're going to blow and then depending on <laughs> how they blow it can rip through a whole bunch of other parts there's there's some resistors that are underneath this connector that go sometimes and then the bo whole board's got to come out of the chassis connector has to come off 16 pin connector that's got to come off in order to get to some of those resistors underneath there so <clears throat> when we look at this thing from your voltage transformer, you've got 180 volts coming in to the FET. The FET's going to turn on and off with the, with the coil. Inside this coil, there is a metal core. Around that metal core are the primary windings and then the secondary windings. And by energizing, when you take wire and you wrap it around a magnetic-oriented piece of steel, the field is going to increase around there and it's going to exponentially affect the amount of current that's in that wire. So here is actually an x-ray of this coil. And you can see this dark area all through here. This is the metal core. And then these are your primary windings. And if you look at, this is the Mercedes coil. And if you look at these wire windings, they're all very evenly spaced. Okay, nice and uniform. It's very important. And then the secondaries. These just look like discs, but this is very fine wire that is going around and around and around. And again, when we energize this primary around this magnetic piece of steel, we're putting a, a field out around here, and the wires in that field are going to increase the voltage. So we're taking... Most cars only take 12 volts, but of course Mercedes had to convert that 12 to 180. We're putting 180 volts into this winding. We're exciting it by going through the magnetic field over these coils, and we're going to pump out 50, 60,000 volts on the other end. When you turn the FET off, when this guy switches off, 
the field collapses. So the energy stored in these wires is released and that creates a spark in the spark plug. So this happens, this has to happen in a very uniform way. This field being generated by the primary has got to be consistent across here. So when the power cuts, you've got an induction, a rush going out all at the same time, very evenly, or else you're going to have a problem. If we look at the next x-ray picture I've got here, this is basically the coil sitting like this, right? So you're looking at the three pins coming off of here and the wires, very short length coming off the coil to the termination point. Okay, so actually these long wires here are what are the pins that you see coming out. So we've got this area at the very top of the coil uh, where you can see these windings. You can tell we've got some kind of a nice encapsulation system. We've got a nice heavy duty wire here soldered and then we've got a nice encapsulation. You can see that so we don't have any loose wires. So this is, this is Mercedes quality going on right here. Again, the uniformity, the primary and the secondary. So when I had the problem with my supplier with the 500 coils and they said there's nothing wrong with them, okay, so this is the coil that I've been getting. And again, I haven't had a problem with stuff out in the field. I catch all the problems through my test process. So it's, it's, it's pretty uh, lengthy for me sometimes. And you can tell the difference between the strategies. Um, this metal is a little bit thicker, but there's also a secondary um, piece of metal in here which forms these divots. So these, these two little pressure points are on a second piece of metal. Um, besides acting as a guide tube for, for these things when you go to put them into the block, this serves as a guide tube, but the metal is really an RF shield. So the idea is that you're going to ground out on the block here and so that any, any of the electrical noise we've generated uh, is going to come through on the radio. So this part really doesn't touch the block. It, you're getting some touching with these, with these little divots here. The problem with, with this system here is that if you press on this, it doesn't bounce back. It just stays pushed in. And if it's pushed in a little bit, when you put the insulators in, these things were punched out with a die and they are razor sharp. And you can, you can put the insulator in and just cut it like taking a razor blade right up of it. So um, again, one of the deficiencies, it wasn't an electrical problem. And I've very often left these wires disconnected by accident doing a test drive. And I've never had any static coming through the radio. So it's one of those things that, you know, if you, you want to address the issue, even though it may not be all that common. You might see lots of mosquitoes zooming around here. We've got another week or two to go of mosquito season. So anyway, that's, that's the, um, the OEM coils. So when I had the aftermarket coils x-rayed, my 500 bad ones, the first thing that jumps out at you when you look at these primary windings, for example, we got a gap, we got unevenness. Um, it looks like here, they, this looks like it's two layers maybe, and maybe they skipped a big gap and they went around. <coughs> Hard to tell exactly what's going on, but it, you don't have that nice uniform even look that the OEM uh, coils have. And then you look at the secondary windings, and it, it's kind of like you've got these that are pretty much the same size as the Mercedes ones, looks like. Maybe a little bit shorter, not quite as many winds. And then you got these down here, and they're like bigger. It's like, what the heck's going on? I mean, there's absolutely no uniformity in the way these things were wound. So we got we got gaps in the primary and we got different size secondary coils going on. You notice here on this one the OAM coils go right pretty much down to the end of the core at least to where the end of the secondary is. The aftermarket ones, the ones that were bad that they insist are good, look at this, the primary winding stops. So here you've got, you've got these secondary windings with no primary. So there's no field being generated down here. It's just a whole bunch of wires just sitting there. So it's just, it's just amazing to me that uh, even by showing pictures, showing proof, they didn't want to listen. And then you compare the Mercedes way of terminating and then what these clowns were doing. Um, here again, we have a nice, we take, the, we take the windings right up to the end of the coil, and we've got a very short run to the pins. These guys, oh, let's just stop down here, you know, an inch away, and we'll just run these wires, 
this is this is plastic. I mean, you can't see the plastic because we're X-rayed through it. But they've just they just left these wires loose in there and then did the injection molding through the plastic. So there's no telling. I mean, if if that process, they, you could have broken these wires pretty easily. Um, and then of course they're just soldered on there. I don't see the same kind of encapsulation that the OEM uh, ones did. So there's the issue with our friends on eBay that are selling these coils. So like I said, I stopped all the problems. It's just that we got to the point where they couldn't provide me with anything good. So when this group of engineers in China got a hold of me, um, right at the exact necessary time, uh, we went through specs. We went through a whole bunch of stuff trying to come up with a new coil. And when, I, when you start taking a look at the intricacies involved here of what's got to happen, we've got to have... I'm looking for a decent picture I can use. We've got to have the nice <laughs> primary windings. Um, we've got to have the secondaries that are evenly spaced, evenly done. you got to get that done. You have to get the right size wire in both the primary and the secondary. Clearly, these are different size uh, gauge wires. You've got to end up with a product that's going to be able to take... When you look at what's going on here, I, I, I stopped short explaining... Sorry, I'm wandering. Uh, how these things work. Let's just focus on, uh, let's see, this is the right side. So this just happens to be cylinders one and two. So this is the first cylinder, 1A, if you will, and 1B. So when 1A, we'll take it from the very first rotation of the engine, 1A is going to get 180 volts and it's going to fire. 1B is going to follow by a nanosecond or two and off the voltage transformer it's taking 23 so we got 180 I can usually scratch right into this conformal coating so you got 180 volts coming into this guy and then this guy over here is gonna follow right afterwards with 23 volts input 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 so this 18 this 180 volts is actually being increased over 300 times as a result of the windings that I showed you there so We've got close to 60,000 volts coming out from the 180 going in. A nanosecond later, this one with 23 volts in is going to fire. And it's looking for unburned fuel. And very often, this is what's triggering that misfire code. So if there's any fuel in the combustion chamber, it's going to get a voltage reading. Based on that, you see the iconic, the ionic um, readings come back. That's a result of this one with a very low, a lower voltage firing to see if anything burned. So if nothing burned, you got a spark, nothing happens. If it dissipated, if there was gas in there, it knows that we've got a problem like this one didn't fire at all, and that's going to throw a misfire code. The next rotation of the engine, these guys are going to flip-flop. This one's now going to fire 180 volts, and this one's going to follow up with the 23. So every other firing, these are taking the lead role, and then subsequently the other one's taking the follow-up role. So Mercedes did that, A, as a means to find out if we burned all the fuel the first time, and then secondly, by doing the switch back and forth, you're not burning fuel from this point into the cylinder every time. You're alternating, so theoretically over lots of miles, you're not going to be wearing the cylinder down on one side. You're going to get more even, um, well, theoretically, you're not going to have um, deposits on the piston, but you're not going to have a cooler side of the piston from always being on the far side of the spark. You're alternating both times. So that's what's going on uh, in that particular venue. So when we were looking at coming up with a better mousetrap, but we're obviously not talking mousetraps, we're talking ignition coils, but to come up with a better ignition coil, we're sitting here going, okay, so it's got to it's got to take 180 volts in, come out with 60,000 volts on the backside. That same ignition coil has to function with 23 volts coming in, and firing something like 6,000 volts in order to to do that sniffer one. So the same the same coil has got to work the same with both of those inputs, and you still got to come back and figure out how many winds of the primary, how many winds of the secondary, and how do we make a better coil. So what we see with my next show and tell item, this is a, I love, I love getting these in because when I, when I sell them as, as rebuilt units, they look brand new. And this, this unit basically is new. I think the guy said it was 13 months old. Mercedes wouldn't cover the warranty on it. So it's got like 6,000 miles on it. And I get this a lot from people. They're just like, there is no way that pack is bad. I just put it in a year ago. I just put it in two years ago. And what's happening 
is that the metal core, the metal core inside of here, over time, forget mileage for the time being, the metal core is actually corroding and that corrosion is acidic and it's eating through maybe the insulation area here or some of it's getting out and eating this is only like a very a thin layer of varnish over these wires for insulation eating through that and causing a short so if these things even though this pack may be quite new these coils could have been made eight years ago I mean I have no idea how they're doing their inventory control but when this thing got near end of life they may have produced a whole bunch of them and that's why these people with 04s, 05s, with 19,000 miles on them are failing to fire because of the corrosion that has taken place inside on this iron core. And it's, it's ruining the, core from the, the, the coil from the inside out. So what we did is uh, over time here, recent, recent time, there are new technologies. You can take bits of metal and basically float them in molten silicone. Think of a, a peanut M&M getting, getting coated with chocolate. These are smaller bits of metal that are getting coated, completely surrounded by silicone. You can, put, you can stack that up, and you can cut it in core shape, and then you can actually hand shape it to some extent, um, and then you can start your winding. So now you've got a core that's completely protected from the environment. It's never going to corrode. And also, the benefit that you have by having little pieces of metal, when you do these windings around this core, the magnetic effect is only on the surface layer. So regardless of how deep this core material is, you're only getting the benefit from this layer of metal here from, from the magnetation, magnet, magnet, I can't say that word, when it's magnetized. This is gonna be too hard to edit out. So the magnetization of that core um, it's only from the surface area. When we use our technology now with the bits of metal with the silicone around them, you're going to have voids, right, where that silicone is, which means that electric field, when it gets generated, it's actually reaching deeper into the core. So the net effect is we're getting a much stronger field from the magnetic pulses coming out of here because we've been able to get deeper, not just the surface. So we're actually getting a hotter spark particularly off that 23 volt line. And I can feel it in the car when you're at idle, just giving it gas, taking off from a stoplight, something like that, you can feel you've got a hotter spark. You can tell there's more horsepower being generated at super, super slow speeds like that. So if you were to take, when, when we got all done figuring out all this stuff, what needs to be done, if you went to your favorite sports field and you took the football field and you started at the goal posts, come down to the next goal post, and you go to your other next favorite sports field and you rip up their field and you put it down here next to this one. Their goal post, come down here. So you got one, two, three, four goal posts, which is what, 240 yards, I guess. If you had your buddy take one of our new coils, one of our new coils, if he was down here and held on to one end and we started unrolling this thing, you'd be past that fourth goal post and you'd still have wire left. That's how much wire is wound up in here to get the effect that we needed to uh, for these things to work properly. And proud enough of our product that it even says the V12ICPack.com right on the metal shields. So these are no aftermarket parts. This is our design. It's our product. So I am taking full responsibility <laughs> for how these coils work from now on. I did before anyway, but uh, it was just scary for me because the whole quality control is completely out of my hands. Now it's not. So that's, uh, in a nutshell, that's a big nutshell at this point, of why these things fail. And it's, it's the corrosion that's happening to that metal core very often. And once you get any kind of a break in any of these wires, you're done. Now, if we go back to this thing here, we've got a common bus line that runs through all these, which means these guys are all wired like, like a string of Christmas light bulbs. So you know what happens on those. You take one bulb out and the whole strand goes dead. And that's one of the reasons that when you guys go, I can't believe that the whole pack died. I had a misfire in number two and now the whole thing is dead. Yeah. Something shorted in here, and it took out the entire pack, even though it's just one problem. Now, one thing that um, is possible that people ask, can you just fix number two? Yeah, I can, 
but the problem is the rest of these all have lived in the same environment. So if this one corroded through, enough corrosion happened inside of it that it caused it to fail, I can guarantee you if I replace this one and we fix it, you're going to go on, oh, car's running great, it's fast again. You're going to, you're going to start pushing harder on the accelerator, and then this one's going to go, and then this one's going to go. And if you're going to be chasing your tail. So the only time I like to replace these is if somebody had this, you know, on the ground, <laughs> or maybe when they pulled it out they broke something, a mechanical failure, as opposed to an electric failure. If it's electric failure, just figure you need to have the whole thing rebuilt. If it's something mechanical, um, it makes sense to take a look at maybe just fixing that one cylinder. While I've got this in my hand, these three tabs right here, these three tabs, that's what locks these into the pack. Okay, so it's a it's a quarter turn, not even a quarter turn, but it's a it's a slight turn, and then they're locked in. And then you can tell that the pins line up with these wires. These have been already been this one's been cut, which is why it doesn't reach anymore. So I turn it that far, and I can pull the coil out. So imagine if this is 12 years, 14 years old, this plastic's going to be rotten. And so when you're trying to pull that pack out, the only thing holding this on are these three tabs. And if you've got a lot of stiction between your spark plug and this insulator, that resistance may be more resistance than these tabs, and these will break. And now, now you've got this thing dangling off the end of the pack. Um, so if that happens, I would say if the pack was, you know, 30,000 miles or five years old, something like that, it would make sense just to replace the broken coil. But if your pack is 12 years, 12 years seems to be kind of the magic mark of when these things just start to give out regardless of miles. Um, somebody called this week with 148,000 miles on the original packs. That's the most I've ever heard. Um, but figure if you're if you're at 12 years old or if you're at 70, 80,000 miles, you're kind of done. You just need to go with a whole new pack. But at least if I rebuild it, you're going to get advanced technologies with the core. You're not going to have this corrosion problem inside. So if you're one of these guys that, that you got a, a, a people refer to them as as a garage princesses, if you if you're the kind of guy that takes it out on nice days on Sundays, you're not getting very much mileage built up on it. This is going to be the way to go because this thing is going to last. It's not going to. Uh, die off over time and of course you can tell we spent the extra money with the two tools so that we too have a secondary piece of metal for these spring-loaded tabs so we're making contact with the block but they can move and you can actually see this piece moving inside of here maybe as I'm depressing that okay so there's the the inside of your coil pack there's why they fail here's what's going on with the aftermarket guys again these clowns out of Florida, I was doing business with them for over three years, and the best they can tell me is they should work, and sorry. And then all of a sudden after that, there was another company in China that started showing up making rebuilt coil packs. So makes me wonder if it was a, an inside move to <laughs> maybe put me out of business, since I, I, know, they, I, I know I was their biggest customer uh, with these, and it's funny that they would just turn me off the way they did but they did and it's all for the better we're all going to come out on top better product um, so if you got any questions feel free to give me a call my number's on the website v12icpack.com and uh, we'll wrap this thing up all right so now that we've seen how the coil pack works and we've seen uh, how the coils work and all that um, if I've got any communication skills at all, you've got a better understanding of what's going on under the hood, how your coil packs work, how they tie in with the voltage transformer. And also, uh, hopefully, you've got mm, maybe some small feeling that perhaps I've got a better handle on how these things work than the average guy at your average shop that you're taking your car to. So, uh, if you've got problems with the coil pack, your voltage transformer, give me a holler. We can rebuild them make them better than they were and uh, appreciate you watching this and look forward to your future business. Thanks.